Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part 9 of my Introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll add some wandering enemies for the player to avoid. As before, we'll click the level to add a new object. Let's name it Monster, and make it movable. Notice here that the object's forward direction is set to point right. We'll need to know that later. Next, we'll select an appropriate sprite. And since it should be moving around, add a walk animation. Because the monster should always be moving, we'll start the animation when the game begins by using a once trigger. And set the animation to loop so it will play continuously. We want the object to always move at a constant speed, so to do this, we'll add an always trigger to send a number. to our velocity. Let's set the speed value to about 6. And send this number into our velocity's forward input. We noticed earlier that the forward direction is pointing to the right, so that means this object will always move to the right. The monster should turn around if it bumps into something, so let's add a collision trigger to check for that. We'll leave the collision set to any type, but we only want it to activate when we touch an object on the left or right, so uncheck the top and bottom directions. It's also a good idea to add some repeat delay to this trigger so that it can't activate for multiple frames in a row. This will give the monster a little time to get away from the obstacle before it activates again. In order to make the monster change directions, we use a flip block. A flip block will reverse the object's forward direction. Connecting the collision trigger to the flip block's toggle input means that the direction will now be reversed each time it bumps into something. Now let's test to make sure everything works as expected. Okay, it seems to work. Let's expand the game size a bit. and add a monster up here. Now we need to handle ledges, where there's no obstacle blocking the monster's path. A good way to check to see if there's an object close to us is to use a raycast. A raycast will send out an invisible ray from our object and tell us if it hits anything. We can use this check to tell if there's ground in front of the monster for it to walk on. If there isn't, then we'll tell the monster to change direction to prevent falling. We'll need two raycast blocks, one to look left and one to look right. When the raycast settings panel is open, we can see an indicator that shows the direction and length of the ray, which makes adjusting it easier. We just need to point the ray down towards the ground and to the right, and if it misses, that means we're approaching a ledge on the right and should flip back to the left. We'll do the same on the left side and flip back if we approach a ledge on our left.
Now let's test to make sure it works. Okay, now that the monsters are moving around the way we want, let's make them destroyable by jumping on their head. To do that, we just need to add a collision block. Set it to player, and leave only the top direction enabled. Then connect it to a destroy block. Now to make the monsters damage the player, we'll add a collision trigger, set it to monster, and enable all the directions except bottom. Now if we connect that to the existing damage logic, the monster will damage us if we contact the monster anywhere other than with our feet. Okay, the monsters are working. In the next video, we'll tidy up our logic and add some projectiles. Thanks for watching.